Anyways, welcome everybody. This is gonna be the second game in a best of seven series in between the two pool show match um, featuring Team Secret by uh, Piper, also known as Kmer, and Tato in yellow and red on the southern part of the map. And on the northern part of the map, it's gonna be Hera and Leary in blue and green. Half of the civilizations for each team is selected by themselves, and the other half is gonna be by the opponent. As you can see, Hera is gonna be utilizing Cordians. This is a civilization that Secret gave them. And on the other side, Leary is utilizing uh, Indians that they selected for themselves in green. Meanwhile, on the other side, Viper is using Khmer. Well, fitting for his username in yellow, and Tato is gonna be playing Incas in red. So, very, very interesting combos you hear from both sides. I wonder how Hera is gonna approach this uh, Koreans thing. They can look at his map, the map is Golden Pit, by the way. So, as you can see, we have uh, a pit full of gold. This is why Golden Pit is the name of this map. It's fairly balanced in terms of gold placement, as I see it. So, um, basically, gold is evenly spread evenly close to the edge of the pit as well in all directions, so it's a very very nice map generation that we are having over here. And take a look at the Hera's map. His golds and stones are not that magnificent, in fact having these uh, free cluster together is just absolutely horrible. But aside from that, I think the only key thing is that if he can secure his gold mine he could do a fast castle play here, probably using this gold mine as his or as part of his wall and then securing that stone. And we could see a fast castle war wagon play coming up from Hera. From Leary, Indians scouts into camos feels like the most reasonable option for him. Although a different way of approaching things could be something like uh, Cav Archers or Indians, even though it feels uh, very unlikely with the civilization being teamed up with Koreans. On the other side, Khmer. Very versatile civilization. Khmer Knights are not that glorious though, so I wonder how Viper is going to be utilizing them. Maybe he's going to play the role of the Archer civilization and then start emphasizing Scorpions a bit more. On the other side, for Tato, he's playing Incas. So for Incas, you can actually play them as a fairly decent uh, archer civilizations. Well, yeah, it's it's stone and gold pit, but it's mostly gold. Oh, there is some stone as well. But this is golden pit. Official game in, or official map in the game, so they are just utilizing that one. Anyways, oh boy. Slight issue here for Viper. Um, he wanted to get grab that uh, goat. Apparently, it is because he just lured in the board, so it's fine. It's absolutely fine for him. Nice positioning of the middle over there, fitting a villager in between. So, that's something to point out. And as expected, Hera is gonna be voling fairly aggressively over here, making sure that that gold bind will be his. He could theoretically go for archers over here. That would be a very interesting archer matchup, because he would end up Koreans versus uh, Inca archers, which are not that glorious at all. So... They are fairly balanced, neither of those civilizations have great archers. Um, on the other side of things though, if Hera is going for a fast castle and Tato goes for a towering attempt, then he could definitely do some very very good towering here, and I think that is something that he should account for. So seeing all of these stone and gold together, a single tower would be able to deny all of these minerals, and probably the follow-up tower might even be able to range this gold pile, so you could do major damage to Hera's eco by just attempting a towering over here. But for now, it's just gonna be a boiler. Anyways, this soldier over here from Taro is exposed, and if Hera finds her, then that is gonna be a juicy kill. Meanwhile, um, for Tato, he's gonna be doing for a drush here, taking 10 gold from the gold mine. It's not something that was spotted by Hera, it's very, very lucky for uh, Taro because that could have been a free villager snipe. And Taro is gonna do a fairly early click up, so it's gonna be 18 villagers, click up to Feudal Age, I do believe, after Loom. And then probably go for towering. I don't know. Although he's queuing up some more villagers. So this might just be for the protection of those villagers. Loom will arrive just in time. So the timing was good there from Taros. Hera will not be able to kill this villager. But will be able to delay a tiny bit. Anyways. Um, Taro with the Incas. Coming in with the Barracks. So this is not going to be a super late click up. E Still did believe that Men at Arms and Towers feels like an option here. Meanwhile for Viper, very early walls, he's got a nice gold and stone. Both of them are involved or included into the walling and that means that this could be a very nice fast castle coming in from Viper. Maybe fast castle straight elephants could be in the play or the snake. But there is the Brax coming up from Tati, he's still queuing up some more villagers so 
The loom here earlier was just to make sure those vultures don't get sniped at the perimeter. Meanwhile, for Leary's map, very, very nice map. The gold is quite nice, has a lot of wood at the back. Very easy to wall. The other gold is also easily wallable here as well. So basically, all players could go for a fast castle type of an approach. But with Tato spawning in the militias and Hera seeing the Brax, Hera will be prepared for the militias to arrive. He's gonna be fully walled by them, but like I said, if he loses both of his stone mines and this gold mine, he's gonna be in big trouble because counter towering will not be an option. However, this is where the fun begins. Are you sure about towering Koreans? Like, you have Incas, which is one of the more interesting um, civilizations for towering, but towering Koreans is just damn painful. Apparently, Tato is still just queuing up villagers here. 23, 24 will be the villager count, so this is not gonna be towering at all. This is gonna be a drush fast castle type of a play here from Tato. Um, that he does have the gold at the back that he can actually utilize and taking away 10 gold from the beginning from the beginning is definitely something that can make you think that it's gonna be a drush FC. Problem is that this will not really work because Hera is gonna be fully walled by the time that Tato arrives and reaching Leary would take a lot of time. Meanwhile for Viper, who I initially thought would actually fast castle, appears to just play standard archers here maybe, 22 vultures click up. Seems to be the case for him. Uh, one villager over here might get a bit harassed by the scout of Leary, who is already up to feudal age. Of course, he clicked up fairly early and goes for the scout's opening here. It's gonna be tricky because his initial scout is trapped inside the base of the Viper, and all of the players are walled. Meanwhile, apparently, uh, we do have uh, Tato just trying to prevent that villager from finishing the walls. I don't think this will really happen with the... Hera just ready with the walls. Perfect timing. He's gonna lose a lot of HP on his own scout, but deals a lot of damage to Tato's one as well. And Tato will not be able to get inside here with the militias. Meanwhile, um, I am fairly certain that Leary is just running uh, circles around the town center of the Viper. And this is... This is not an archer's build. I was... Wait, it is. I actually thought this is Blacksmith's and Market, but yeah, it's gonna be archer's build then. I initially thought that Viper might be aiming for something like a super super fast castle because you can do that with Khmer because you do not have prerequisite buildings but instead what Viper is doing is that Khmer do not require the barracks to construct archer ranges so he's not making any barracks in fact he's are hiding the archer ranges that's very important so he wants to make sure that their opponents know nothing about those archer ranges this is why he's not building them right next to the walls here even though it could still be spotted by Leary who has a scout inside Meanwhile, the militias from Taro are just shifting target as Hera is doing a beautiful job. Look at that. Hera is using that weak scout to relay the position of those militias um, to the... to his teammate and indeed Leary going up with the walls and that means that these militias yet again will fail to move inside. How big is the price pool? $250 uh, over here. I think it's a 70-30 split between the teams. Anyways, now Leary will spot that Viper is going for archers over here, and this is interesting. So, Khmer archers are not amazing by any means, and if you go Khmer archers, what is gonna be your unit with the... Uh, oh. Archers and eagles? Feels a bit weird, to be honest, as Leary will lose a lot of HP on this scout, just carelessly bearing the archer fire. Look at that. Oh, that's a bit careless from Leary. Uh, I think he's kind of trying to deal with these militias going in, though, because that is a very, very weak villager, bowling himself around, probably gets some shots from the militias. Not sure how those guys got in, but... Oh, man, Leary's gonna have one trapped villager over here that will probably struggle to go home for quite a time. Leary will be forced off to, uh, to call off all of his scouts back home to clean this up. It's a bit of a delay on his aggression. Meanwhile, Archer's coming in from Hera, but... He can't break him without the help of Leary, so this is super tricky, because this rush over here, even though it did not kill any villagers or so, is forcing Leary to go back home, and this way, Hera will not be able to push Tato, who is just gonna take up the castle age very soon, and I do anticipate him to go for eagles here, um, that might be the plan. Meanwhile, for Viper, he's gonna continue with archers here, adding blacksmiths, and will go for a decent amount of archers, go for a defensive tower, he can still probably make one more town center once he reaches Castle Age because taking this stone is not really a hard thing for him to do. So we'll just send three villagers to pick up 10 stone each and he's going to be able to do two TCs. Yeah. Anyways, now it is going to be uh, Verp Viper moving in with the Khmer archers here. He's going to have fletching by the time he arrives. And on the other side of things though, um, Taro will be forced to stonewall himself off with the increasing num amount of archers coming in from Hera. So, second Brax coming in and I do think that... Uh, at this point, AM needs to think about, hey, 
My opponent is Incas going for a Drushfest Castle, probably for Eagle Warriors, and this is super important. Uh, we got a nerf in Definitive Edition for Gates, so their armor is very, very weak, and as you can see, these archers and scouts are just bashing their way in super fast, and Tato might be in trouble here. He's trying to rush up a tower, but... Oh boy, this could be big, big trouble for him. Trying to second layer this one, but the archers will probably prevent that. I think the best thing that you can do over here indeed is just try to cut off the incoming route from the scouts, because um, the tower is able to kill the archers, but what you have to deal with is really the scouts, because if the scouts get below the tower, you're gonna be in big trouble. That is sacrificing a lot of villagers to make this happen. And meanwhile, though, sniping down a lot of military from Leary, and I'm not sure if that's... Uh, that's uh, really worthy for AM. They did snipe down a few villagers, though. From uh, Tato. So, as you can see, Tato is down to 29, but he's gonna be up to Castle Age. Was forced to make a gate and a tower, though, so he cannot make additional town centers. So, it's gonna be an, probably an all in Castle Age ego push. But take a look at this one. Leary has an insane uptime compared to how many scouts he went for. He went for like four scouts, and that's a great one. That's a great uptime. So, initially, um, Tato was probably gambling for a decent f castle time with all these egos, but by the time he arrives to Castle Age, Lyra will be able to start popping out camels. Meanwhile, for Hera, he's falling back. Uh, he is probably getting ready to click up to Castle Age, but he's still far away from that. Where is Viper with the archers? Viper is doing a big, big loop around here, trying to find a way into Lyra's base, but I'm not sure if he's going to be able to do that. I think... Yep, he's just signaling his position to Tato, and he knows that this is the wood line here from Leary, so I guess he's going for it, trying to get some villager snipes. Meanwhile, for oh, Tato, oh, he's yeah. going in with the eagles. No eagle warrior upgrade just yet, though those are simple eagle scouts, yeah, yeah. Uh, as there is going to be the scaleboarding armor coming up from Leary. Once he has a decent amount of camos, he should be able to clean up these eagles, so this is looking way better for AM right now. Um, Hera has a nice little build here. Probably will click up to Castle Age very soon as the last player going into Castle. That could be a slight issue for Aftermath though, because if they can defend against this one, they are going to be in trouble. One thing why this is good for AM though, I believe, is because Indian camels do have extra pierce armor, so they are probably the most resistant camels to arrow fire. So the archers from the Viper will not really hurt them, especially just Feudal Age archers. Meanwhile, defensive siege workshop coming up from Leary, clearing the archers. The quick walls are super, super nice, so by the time these guys bash their way through, even the Siege Workshop is gonna go up. Very nice defense here from Leary, and uh, unless there is a hole, Secret will not be able to get inside. Indeed, there is just no hole. Leary is making sure, after previous game, Leary just wants to make sure there is no holes at all. And the second TC is denied on this gold pile. No one is contesting the middle gold just yet as Viper is falling back to Massis Crossbows. And I feel like the composition of Leary and uh, Hera is just much cleaner here. Very good. Camels that are super resistant to arrow fire, that's not something that you can tell of all camels here. They will have some decent archers. Boar wagons might be in the play as well for Hera in the long run, but uh, in the short term this is just gonna be crossbows coming up from him. Meanwhile, for the snake, he is gonna be playing one town center only. Same for Taro as I can see, so both players from Secret playing one town center. Same for Leary. The amount of aggression will force them to pay 1 TC, but eventually Leary is going to start making the second one, and that could give a big advantage in uh, Eco very soon. Now, this is a big force coming in from the Viper, and he has the advantage compared to Hera in the numbers and the technology of the archers. So Viper will have Botkin and Crossbow coming very soon. Meanwhile, Hera is just halfway up to Castle Age, and that means that he still needs a lot of time until he gets those up to crossbows. This is actually a very, very nice defense over here. If you can just wall these guys around the TC, we'll protect you from the rest. It seems very, very unlikely that uh, Viper and Taro could get through here. Probably a few villagers might die to this, like that guy over there. But aside from that, it's it's very, very hard for Secret to get in here. And 88% camels coming in from the other side. This might be a bit of a premature engagement here from Leary. Needs to wait. Uh, meanwhile, for Hera, it's gonna be rough. I'd need to evacuate this wood line because this house is going down dangerously fast. This is not gonna save him enough time. This is not gonna be enough time and indeed, um, Taro is moving in for the snipes. Hera will be forced to run back over here. This is actually coming up to a disaster. Um, evacuation order is given. Crossbowmen coming in as well as Thumbring as well. So those will make those crossbows very, very tough. Hera will have a lot of idle time, but they have the chance to clean up the entire army of Secret over here. So I think right now... It's a bit of an annoyance, I do agree with this one, but now they have trapped Viper's entire army. 
and they should be able to clean this up, I do believe. Or, but Secret is gonna break out here, that's actually very, very nice. So, um, what happens now? Hero did make a defensive tower, so he cannot actually go for another one over here. He will need a town center, but he needs extra stone for that. Meanwhile, though, um, <clears throat> meanwhile, though, we are gonna have a decent amount of camels coming in, and those camels should be able to catch up with the crossbows here. And like I said, with the extra armor Indians do receive, these guys are very, very resistant to arrow fire. Viper adding TC number two to the stone and gold mines. TC number three is already up uh, here on the far left side. Poor Tati adding the second TC is uh, what happens now. And he's gonna make uh, multiple villagers on stone, which makes me believe it's gonna be either more town centers or probably a Kamayuk switch at some time. Anyways, Mangalon coming for Leary. They just want to clean up Viper's army here right now. Eco numbers, Viper and Leary head to head if it villager counts. Hera is much behind of Tato though, so that push against Hera and the late castle H time really hurt his eco in the long run, it seems. But anyways, um, right now, Viper is just unable to um, really escape this pocket, even though he could snipe down a few villagers if he has the position to do it. Meanwhile, Hera, no armor on those crossbows. Viper has plus two armor on those crossbows, and that is something significant. If Viper takes this engagement directly, then that is gonna be something that he's gonna easily win, but the Mangano is gonna land a shot on Viper. Maybe even a second one before all of those crossbows go down. That's a beautiful one as well. Viper will get his uh, entire army cleaned up over here, down to 40 military, and meanwhile, um, Hera is uh, okay. forcing back Viper here, Theory pushing back uh, Tato. Eco numbers, like I said though, bigger for Secret, mainly because Hera is behind in Voyager count. He is not able to add TC number 2 just yet, needs to mine some stone with a few Voyagers. I think this is the time though for AM to make a push. They do have a lot of crossbows. 29 compared to 13 is the crossbow numbers right now. Uh, and cavalry numbers are also impressive. Liri has 20 camels, Tato just 17 Eagle Warriors and Camels should be able to destroy Eagle Warriors fairly well. And apparently both Leary and Hera will be going to the central gold mine here with the additional town center. This is tricky because if uh, Viper or Tato take position on the outside perimeter of the pit, they can start shoving those down with castles, but apparently it's gonna be forward siege workshop from Hera. Since he's unable to afford a new town center because of his stone situation, he's gonna go for a forward siege workshop and start sieging uh, Tato. I also like this move because Viper, yet again, with the Archer Civilization, is slower to arrive um, just purely because of the fact that he's playing the Archer Civilization. In fact, his Archers could get caught off guard and this is where those Camels could be in a decent position. I think they need to wait for the crossbows and trade evenly. And what's even more interesting is that uh, these Camels, these are Indian Camels, they do have a attack bonus against buildings. So they can take down buildings super super fast. I wonder how aggressive Leary and Hera will be playing this one. So far Viper is just trying to buy some time for Taro, probably for uh, massing of those ego numbers and some mangonels. I feel like you need some more camels into this fight, there is the reinforcements coming in. This is very very interesting here. No damage is done on Taro's eco, so right now still Hera is playing from behind, but if you take a look at the crossbow numbers, Hera has slight advantage, and Liri also has more military than what uh, Tato has, and I feel like uh, these camels are just much sturdier than these eagles, even though the eagles will do quite well against the archers. So it's a tricky, tricky fight, um, but with Hera expanding his eco, Liri also has some decent eco numbers, even though he's behind Viper in eco. So 76 eco, 79 for the Viper, booming on 1, 2, 3, 4 town centers. Liri just added TC number 4, so this is why they're a bit behind, but apparently they are switching focus towards the Viper, and that could be very, very important. Meanwhile though, Mango Dance will begin, decent trade here from both sides, and oh man, let's see, there is a bunch of crossbows, a bunch of eagles, so far Viper and Tato is just playing the delay game, I think one of them might be going for Imperial, probably Tato is aiming for Imp, Viper is also aiming for Imp, Leary and Hera are both super far away from Imperial, so they need to make the push right now, because soon they will be facing an Imperial Age army, so either Viper or uh, Tato needs to be pushed here from Secret because uh, the eco of Hera is just not sufficient to catch up with what uh, Secret has. Now comes the fun part though. Um, these camos can just bash down the walls very very fast, but I think they're just waiting for Viper's forces to arrive from the back. A few crossbowmen will trade here, but thing is, Liri and Hera are doing a nice job massing army, but they cannot do any damage with it. Right now it's literally zero damage that is being done by uh, AM here. Finally they are engaging this one. But yet again, they will back off um, against this aggression as Imperial Age is coming in for Viper. Soon it is going to be arriving for Tato as well. Meanwhile, Leary is clicking up to Imperial as well, and that's where it gets interesting. 
Uh, once you get to Imperial Camels, these guys will be absolutely amazing. Meanwhile, for Hera, he's coming in with multiple Manganols. That Manganol could be caught off guard by all of those uh, Eagles. Yes, indeed, but a lot of damage is being done by the Mangos uh, on those guys. So in the end, both Mangos survive. And the forces of Hera are still untouched. He's still far away from clicking up the Imperial, though, like super far away. However, they aren't able to inflict any damage on Taro's Eco, who has a 17 version lead compared to Hera. And that is going to be a significant difference as Taro is moving in with his own Mangano, shading uh, for none here. And that's going to be a beautiful shot coming in from Taro. Uh, but eventually, it's going to be Hera surviving with his own Mangano. Another Mangano coming up from Hera, so he really wants to commit to this Castle Age push over here. But yet again, struggling to push away Secret right now from this position. However, remember that Secret doesn't have a lot of peace here on this gold mine and that means Taro could run out of gold. Egos are super super gold heavy units and if you can force Secret out of gold then that is gonna be a big issue for them. Right now the middle control is absolutely in the hands of Aftermath. Hera still far away from clicking up the Imperial. The castle position over here is not glorious honestly because um, that is something that could be trapped down from the outside although it's tricky because it's really really in the middle so it's decent for um, solidifying control. Anyways, uh, all players reaching Imperial at uh, Kind of identical time, as Viper already has the castle up. What's the plan for him? Right now, Indians just need to fall back, because if they just fall back, they will get some extra Pierce Armor uh, once they reach Imperial. And more importantly, you will have the Heavy Camel upgrade, so this is where those crossbows will be very, very inefficient against the Camels. Meanwhile, though, there is the Arbalest coming in for Viper. Hera needs to take this fight now or never, because Hera is still far away from clicking up to Imperial. If he's not taking this fight right now, he's gonna lose to the Arbalest very soon. Viper still far with the Arbalest, so he will be running away. Hera trying to snipe down as much archers as he can over here, even engaging with the Camels. Camels, heavy Camel upgrade coming in, as well as play burning Armor, as you can see. Um, these Camels will be sturdy against the Arrow Fire. Surround might happen here. The Bracer is there for the Viper, and I think this is the moment when AM realizes that Viper wants to take this fight. Now has Arbalest as well, so it is... Uh, AM that needs to run away right now. Hera just 78 Vulgers, Viper booming at 110, Leary is definitely behind in the Vulger counts. Hera still far away from picking up the Imperial, balancing out the Eco could help a tiny bit, but still, he's super super far. The castle goes up though, and Leary is gonna start picking up Relics as well, Add additional stables. Remember, clock is ticking for uh, AM, as oh boy, Hera's crossbows over here could get caught off guard, trying to be blocked by all of those Eagles, as the Eagle... Elite upgrade is just coming in for Tato. Absolute massacre over here. Hera is getting shredded. Look at that. Look at all those crossbowmen going down. This might be the game over here. Hera has no army. Like, what is Hera gonna do right now? Maybe start going for war wagons. It's very, very tough. It's re really in Leary's hands to carry this game right now with the heavy camels because this is very, very hard. So, right now, Hera going up to Imperial himself, but what is he really gonna upgrade? Losing all of those crossbows is a big, big loss over there. And meanwhile, Taro has a decent army of those Eagles. Soon we'll have Courier's upgrade on them. And let's see if Leary is gonna wait uh, for Imperial Camel before he would actually go for uh, the fight here. Meanwhile, however, Viper is gonna solidify his control in the pit, getting the first gold mine. They are running out of gold very soon. Viper is gonna have two castles to make traps at. And this is the interesting thing. Hera, he has three castles here, but he is not Imperial, so he cannot go or trebuchets just yet. Viper already has trebs out and that means he can start trebbing down the castle of Hera over here and that means that uh, AM is in the danger of losing control over the pit and if they lose that then that's basically game over for them. Abelir in play as well, just pikeman right now for uh, Tado but he's going for um, the anti-cavalry infantry over here um, to deal with all of these camels. Hera Needs to start massing army over here. I'm not sure what is going to happen here. Meanwhile, though, camels are flooding in. Those who have decent pierce armor and a reverse sweep might happen here. Vipers are blessed, completely caught off guard by this. Nowhere to run. They are trading fairly well, but in the long run, they are just going to go down, even though their stacking is quite nice. Bit of a pathfinding issue here for those camels. Oh boy, Leary is losing a lot. I initially thought this is going to be something that Leary wins, but look at how those camels are just struggling to destroy this uh, pocket of uh, Arbless. In the end, Viper is gonna lose most of those, but was this a very efficient trade? Maybe not so much. I am not certain about this. Anyways, um, Hera with multiple siege workshops coming in over here. Both players are up to Imperial, so now we could see slinging as well going to the Imperial 
um, civilization. Viper with a very, very aggressive castle over here, rolling these guys around. The Imperial Camels arrive, and that's the time when those guys could just absolutely shred all of those eagles. Imperial Camels are very, very um, good at destroying infantry. Even these uh, barely decent upgraded pikemen will not stop them in the long run. And this could be a good fight for Leary. He's smashing through the forces of Taro, but bailing out on the aggression. He should have taken this fight. He was definitely winning this one. And now Viper is gonna have the castle over here uh, as Leary is losing this town center over here, losing this gold mine. We'll have to fall back over here uh, to this gold. Still a lot of gold left on this map. But the castle here on Taro's side, this is why having the outside of the golden pit is super important because you will have a lot of damage when firing down here. First trap coming out for Hera, but it's gonna be an uphill fight fighting against four traps that are already out coming up from, uh, from the Viper. He's positioning them very well as well, using the gate to protect it and the uh, gold mine as well. Another castle coming up, but soon those hobbity numbers will increase for Taro, and that means he's going to be able to deal with the camo numbers of uh, uh, Leary here. Looking at the military numbers, Hera is trying to mass military here, but apparently Onager is going to be the unit that he's planning to go for. Camels still waiting the critical mass, I do believe, and I think uh, Hera wants to snipe down this gate. They want to snipe down this gate, then delete these buildings as seen here, and then send in the camels to deal with the traps. But Viper knows exactly what's happening. There is the onagers moving in. This could be big though. Nothing to counter those onagers really. The eagles are mostly dead. Um, the castle sniping them down from a distance though. Onager landing a shot on the traps. Still alive, all of them. And the hobbities will finish off the onager coming in. And meanwhile, Taro is just trapping down the other castle from Hera. This is not looking great for Aftermath over here. Bye. Secret, just playing absolutely amazing in this one. Eagle Wraith coming in on the northern side. It's not the conventional civilization matchup, but since Hera has lost basically all of his army over here, uh, it's gonna be very, very tough for AM to come back, especially considering that they basically have no gold to work with very soon. They still have some gold control, but like I said, it's an uphill fight. Leary down to 96 villagers, by the way, thanks to the raids of the Viper here that are just absolutely massacring his villagers. Now comes the surround with the camels coming in. These guys are fully upgraded Imperial camels. However, still, you have castle fire, you have arbests, and I'm not sure if the numbers will not be enough for uh, AM or for Secret to propel this forward. Multiple traps from the uh, outside perimeter of the pit, trapping down the TCs here from Hera, and that could mean that Secret is losing control. Well, what, what? Secret is gaining control, actually, um, with AM. Resigning in number two, yet again in the hands of Secret on the home map of uh, Aftermath. Oh, it's very weird. I feel like the civilizations were fairly balanced. In fact, AM was in a very good position after snapping down Taro here. The problem was that they couldn't do anything with this aggression here. Invested super, super heavily into the aggression with the camels and crossbows, but were not able to kill basically anything from Taro. So Imperial Age came way faster for... Uh, Viper, way faster for Taro, and with Hera being late to Imperial, that meant that his crossbows all died, and once that happened, it was very, very tough. So, game number two, in the hands of Secret, and uh, what now? Imp Camel was, can be used for, uh, can be used versus Cavalry now. A big uh, deficiency. Mm. Yep, I partially agree on that one, that it's going to be a bit of a problem, the team camels are not going to be great for anti-cavalry. Um, somewhat interesting to see Indians in this party, but it did happen, looking at the strat screen, look at Viper's eco, Viper did an amazing boom with Khmer over here, this is why he's using the username Khmer, he just loves it so much, um, and he went for the ARPs here. Leary got massively outboomed. That's probably the most important part of the game. So, yep, some rally gold as well for Leary. But, yep, Viper with the biggest boom, really propelling himself forward to go up to a fairly fast Imperial. Get the Arblasts, very good positioning. And really, on Golden Pit, it's about. Uh, it's about going into. It's about going into the. Imperial at the appropriate time. If you can time your Imperial well and get a good position on the outside perimeter of the pit, you can just start chabbing on everything that's inside and that is really what can win you the game in the long run. Anyways, 
two points for 